Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. I had an opportunity to watch two-time Olympic gold medalist and bronze medalist in his first Olympics, Zhou Shiming, right? Fighting at flyweight in his fourth professional fight. It happened this past weekend at the Venetian Macau against Yuntong Kokijin. Right now, before I get to Shiming, I believe the telecast is a significant one because of the venue. They fought out of the Venetian Macau. Now, we've seen other fights. Recently, the Manny Pacquiao, Brandon Rios fight from the Venetian Macau. This venue is the future of boxing, just like Macau is the future of gambling. Understand that Macau is a much bigger gambling mecca, dollar-wise, than Las Vegas. Understand the fighters make much more money in Macau than they make in Las Vegas. Right? The culture is there. The gamblers are there. The players are all there. Right? The same group that owns the Venetian in Las Vegas owns the Venetian Macau. Full disclosure, years ago I used to own LVS stock. That's how it's traded here in America. Right? Understand, too, that the same group that owns the MGM in Vegas owns the MGM Macau. The promoter for this fight was the same top rank and Bob Arum that promotes many of the marquee events in Las Vegas, right? The fighters are taxed less. The money is huge. The productions are such that they can air internationally, right, in the Western Hemisphere while the fight is live in the Eastern Hemisphere. I'm just here to tell you that you're going to see going forward, more and more elite world-class fighters fighting out of the Venetian Macau. This venue is what Madison Square Garden used to be in, let's say, the 1930s when it was considered the Mecca for boxing, right? What I want you to do is to realize, and Larry Merchant says it at the beginning of the telecast, and they have an excellent team. It's Fran Charles. Larry Merchant, and Ray Boom Boom Mancini, who does a great job. Larry Merchant points out that for the Manny Pacquiao-Brandon Rios fight, apparently the casinos lost a minimum of $50 million because of two very big gamblers, apparently winning big. Understand, to lay people outside the world of gambling, that would be a tragedy, but to these casinos... That was a coup. They promptly ordered more fights. Because understand, the casinos want stories of events in which some gamblers won big to get out to the gambling community. Because that attracts more gamblers. And over time, the people building these casinos are the gamblers. Right? Over time, the money is going from the customer to the casino. So just understand that boxing in China is being done on a large scale where tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars are being bet on these bouts. Right? As you watch the fight, make sure you look at the venue. Understand even great boxing markets, right? Germany, for example, cannot compete with boxing in areas where gambling subsidizes the events, right? Just the site fee can be millions more when it has casino backing. Okay, now let's talk about the fight itself. You've heard a lot about Zhou Shimei.
This is really a video more about him than the individual fight. He won the fight by seventh round knockout. His trainer is Freddie Roach, the reigning trainer of the year. He's an advanced fighter who switches between orthodox and southpaw. He sets it up so that he's slightly off at the side. He hits you, you can't hit him. He's a master at timing. Right, his game, simply put, is more about timing than it is hand speed. Right, it's more about angles than it is volume. This guy is a technician who's trying to beat you with the judiciously and strategically timed punch. He's not trying to beat you with volume, speed, or power. Now it was fascinating that Ray Boom Boom Mancini, a fighter who was very different than Shaming, was actually the commentator on his fight. Because understand, while Shaming is like an engineer, He's just looking for angles and moments. Understand that Ray Boom Boom Mancini was more of an explosive fighter, right? Shaming is kind of like a flatliner. Ray Boom Boom Mancini, as the nickname suggests, was kind of like a grenade. He would go off at times in rounds. He would throw caution to the wind. In perhaps his best moment, in a fight he lost, he tried to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the great Alexis Arguello. Right? Now, it was fascinating because Mancini offered a different point of view during the telecast. Let me point out that Shaming is a talented fighter. I don't mean to be too critical of him, but my crowd here online is a gambling crowd. Right? We're not a group with pom-poms, you know, hoping everyone has a great career. No, we want the guy we bet on to have the better night. Right? We're not just in it for the sport. We're in it for the money. Right? The group watching this video is the group that wants to take money away from the Venetian Macau. Right? They don't want to help build a casino. They want to help legally leave with money from the casino. So here's what I believe you need to know about Zhou Shimei, two-time Olympic gold medalist. He's 32. He's about to be 33. Understand he's fighting in the flyweight division, a 112 pound weight class. Now while 32 isn't that old at heavyweight or cruiserweight, right? Heavyweights tend to mature later in life. Vladimir Klitschko, for example, is older than Zhao, than Zhao Shimei, right? Several elite heavyweights are older than Shimei, but not many elite flyweights, right? The 32 is very old for the flyweight division. Right? Let me also point out that Shiming himself in the ring is a bit flat footed. He's not a mover. Right? And so, as you see him, it's a little bit surprising that since he is flat footed, he's not able to get more pop on his shots. Right? He wins this fight really due to more of an accumulation of punches than that one shot changing a fight type of punch. Right, He's not a hard hitter. Right, Let me also point out too that as with many older fighters, there's a certain economy of movement. He doesn't move around a lot. Right? Also, he stands a bit upright. He's not bobbing at the waist. Right? So, in my 
opinion, there's an open question, especially in his weight class, and how he would deal with a guy who's fixated on throwing body punches at him. Let's remember, flyweight is where Giovanni Segura resides. Right? Also, because he's a bit flat-footed, you wonder how he would handle a fighter with a jab operating with movement and volume. Right? Floyd Mayweather, higher weight class, welter, super welter, junior middle, right, has been fighting some flat-footed fighters of late. And he's made them look slow. Right? He's hit them and he's then moved away from them. Right? Robert DeGhost Guerrero, for example, comes to mind. One wonders what Shiming would do against a mover since he himself doesn't move that much. Right? Let me also point out that he's such a technician. Right? And he's advanced. He won't lift a hand at times to dodge punches. He's figured out distance, so when you throw on him, he's able to just lean back at times, right? He's very calm in the ring, very methodical. But these are exactly the kind of fighters that guys who throw wide looping punches, think Jorge Arce, think Orlando Salido, who can, let's say, destabilize you by coming in all wild outside the box with a head tucked and a big looping punch. These are the kind of fighters that the loopers tend to do well against. Think Ken Norton in the 1970s. Right? It looked to me like Shemin got hit with some looping shots in this fight. Right? Also, his opponent. I understand this is only his fourth professional fight. The first one in which he got a knockout. Right? Three journeymen went the distance with him before this fight. Now, his opponent is literally tailor-made for him. As you watch the fight, make a mental note of the lack of jabs that the opponent throws. Right? The opponent is not keeping him busy. For a guy who's as methodical as Shiming is, it was a little bit disappointing for me to see an opponent who wasn't trying to force him to get out of second gear. Right? If you're fighting a methodical guy who likes to pace himself, you want to upset the rhythm. You want to upset the pace. One of the ways to do that, I believe, is by shooting a jab. It forces the other guy to address your jab, right? You can change the pace of a fight just by changing the pace of the jab. Keep the other guy busy. Here, the opponent did not keep Shiming busy. He doesn't throw too many jabs, right? Shiming is able to literally set up shop at the angles he wants, fight the fight at the pace he wants, right? Do what he wants. He was able to get in a comfort zone. Now you wonder what happens if Shiming were to fight someone like Brian Valoria. Who's gonna up the tempo? We saw Shiming here at a certain tempo. What happens if he fights a guy who can raise the temperature. Make the fight just a little bit faster paced. Right? I think it's an open question right now. Let me also say this too, and Ray Mancini caught it immediately. Shiming's defense at times comes and goes. At times he gets a little bit caught up in the action. And he drops his hands. In the seventh round, he knocks down his opponent. Right? But then the opponent gets off the canvas. Now I know officially this is not ruled a knockdown. 
But Shiming has his hands low as he comes in. That's a rookie mistake. He gets caught. He goes down. Now the referee thought that it was a slip. Mancini, at the time Shiming hits the canvas, points out that it's a knockdown. Larry Merchant, a Hall of Famer who's seen decades of boxing, agrees with him. On the replay, it's clear. The reason why Shiming is on the canvas is not because the fighters got their feet tangled. It's because he came in, let down his defensive guard because he had just knocked down the opponent. He came in recklessly and got caught. Right? And so my point is, at this point, based on this film, Shiming to me looks like he's going to have to work on his defense. Right? And so to sum up, he has promise, but he's older. He doesn't fight at a fast pace. He's a bit flat-footed. He stands a bit upright. He doesn't have spectacular hand speed. As hyped as he is, with multiple gold medals, and an A-plus top-ranked promotional team behind him. If he were to fight Brian Valoria or Giovanna, uh, Giovanni Segura, right, I'm not sure he beats those guys. Right? There's hype and there's real. Let's just say I didn't see anything that indicated that this guy was special compared to the other world-class competition. Let's be clear, too, on the amateurs. Some of the best fighters you've ever seen. Right? Floyd Mayweather. Did not win a gold medal. Roy Jones. Did not win the gold medal. I know the judge is Rob Jones. Right? I, I know it's one of the all-time robberies in Olympic history. But the point is... Amateur boxing has a political component, doesn't it? Right? In the 2012 London Olympics, understand one of Shiming's fights, wasn't it 15-15, a tie? And then, of course, due to whatever the rule structure is, Shiming was able to advance. Right? So, as impressive as this guy's amateur pedigree is, Right? Just understand that being a professional boxer is literally a different paradigm. Right? Shiming, in my opinion, can cure some things. He can certainly be more diligent defensively. But I don't think he ever gets the kind of punching power Giovanni Segura gets. Right? Has. Right? I don't think he suddenly can develop blinding hand speed. I know he'll never get the center of gravity in the movement that Brian Valoria has right now. Right, so keep an eye on him. He's an excellent technician. But I have doubts on whether with his pacing and his upright stance, right, and his lack of movement, Right? I have questions on whether he's able to run the table and dominate the division. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.